Hello, community. Today, we are coding PEFT, parameter efficient fine tuning. So we're inside the source code, and a lot of you ask me, hey, what kind of things can we do with PEFT? Now, as you can see here, we have four options. We have a token classification, we have a sequence classification, and we're going to focus here on a PEFT model for causal language model or on a PEFT model for sequence to sequence language model. And then, of course, there was the question, what methodologies does PEFT offer currently? And currently I'm recording at end of March 2023. So you can you see we have four options. We have LoRa, the low, the low rank approximation for matrices. We have the P tuning or prompt encoder. We have prefix tuning, and we have prompt tuning. So those are the four methodologies currently implemented. And then there was a question about the target modules. Now, which target modules? Now, if we look at LoRa specific can we do this mapping to? And as you can see here, here are our LLMs that we have, the T5, the multilingual T5, GPT-2, Bloom, Opt from Facebook, GPT-J, GPT-Neo, Bird Roberta, then Electra, then here we have, of course, Llama and other LLMs. Now, a lot of you ask me here about Llama this model by Meta, and how to do here on the Llama model here, LoRa. Now, let me show you, and there I would like to introduce you another great YouTube channel by Sam Wittiven. Have a look at his video. He is doing here, for example, fine-tune your own Alpaca 7 billion parameter model. And you see when he looks here at the tokenizer at the model, all and I've watched 10 different implementations, all refer to this specific model that they download from Hugging Face, the Decapoda Research Llama Hugging Face model that has been optimized by somebody we don't know. And it is amazing. I have not seen a single implementation that is not by this particular model. So now, this is the reason I do not show you this, because I do not want to use something. I have no idea who is it that put this on the internet, what exactly happened in the background. Can I trust those people? I have no information about this. So, But uh, Sam tells us that he himself, he looked here at this specific GitHub repository. So it is T. Lewin. This is Eric J. Wong from Stanford. And if you want to do on the Llama model by Meta AI, you want to do Alpaca LoRa, then from all the implementations, I would highly recommend this to this implementation here. And either you go with the generate pi file here, this is simply the inference you want to do, or if you want to fine tune it in addition, you go with the fine tune file here. This has by far from all implementation I have seen four. Alpaca, LoRa, based on Llama, the best coding. Let's have a look. Let's go to generate. You see here, yes, yes, yes. But you also, even he, he uses here this Decapoda research. So normally you would go to uh, Meta, you would fill out the form, you would request access to the weights because the weights are proprietary, they're not open source. And you have to give your name, your telephone number, your email address, what you want to do, your publication in the area. And then Meta will decide if you will provide you with the specific parameters for all these models. So I understand why they have access here, the resource somebody put on the internet. But if I don't know it, I would not recommend to do it. But the code implementation, very, very nice. I would take this one if it has to be. Llama, then I would definitely recommend here T. Lewin Alpaca Laura. Beautiful. So back to our topic. Now, of course, we want to code something. And as you can see, Llama is just one of the model we have here. So I thought, hey, why not go with a T5 model? Or why not go with a Bloom model? Or why not go with an Opt model? Or a GPT-Neo model? All those models are available for us. 
And of course, we focus today in our video today on LoRa, the low rank adaptation. So beautiful, here we go. For the requirements, yes, we just do a short install. And as always, we do it here in real time because yes, why not? You should enjoy it too. So first what we say, we have a hugging face data set, we have accelerate, we have LoRa lib is a specific library that we need for our 8-bit implementation. We have bits and bytes, and then we go for the main version of our transformer. And of course, we go the git for path. So we're just waiting for the implementation. Then we have a look how much memory we do have available. And we have a look at our GPU characteristic data. I'm operating here on a free Google Colab notebook, no plus, no whatever. This is exactly what you can do. So while this loads, beautiful. Now let's have an example. Let's create now a PEFT LoRa model. And as I told you, we have four options. And we have two options for today. Either we go for a core language model, Causal means we have a task of predicting the token after a specific length, a sequence of tokens that has been given to us. So we have now one or two sentences, and now the LLM continues with the next word. This is causal language modeling. Or we have, oh yeah, here we go. Yeah, everything is done. Build is done. Path to start. Transformer installed latest version. So what do we have? We have a total of 12 gigs. Okay, three, seven, G. So we have a T4, okay. And we run on CUDA version 12. This is nice, 12 is nice. Okay, so yeah, but we do not accelerate. I don't know if we do accelerate today. So let's have a look at our resources just to have everything here in view. So. The first, easy. We have a classical model. So we say, hey, auto model for sequence to sequence. Yes, yes, yes. Language model from a pre-trained T5 base model. This is the classical model that we know, that we love. Beautiful. And if you want, you can have now a look at this model, at each layer, at the absolute uh, definitive structure of our transformer model here. So if you want to start here, we're very beginning. Yes, we have a lot of layers. So here we go. So we have a T5 for conditional generation, embedding T5 stack, T5 block, self-attention. And here we go. Here we have our beautiful weight matrices to remember, the Q, the K, and the V in our output. And then we have a layer normalization when we have a dropout. And then, yes, 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 so beautiful. You have here the complete layer architecture of our model. Yes, it's really huge. So, and then we can say beautiful. And now we do here have a LoRa configuration file. Now this LoRa configuration file, the first task is easy. What method of path from our four methods do you want? We go LoRa. Second is, what do you want the causal or do you want the sequence to sequence? We have a T5, so we are based on sequence to sequence. Now, for the rank I showed you is 8 or 16, whatever you prefer. 16 has a higher uh, accuracy. Then we have here a specific alpha parameter. And as I showed you, we target here our query and value weight matrices. Do you remember at the very beginning here, T5? I showed you if you have T5 or derivations of T5 or here multilingual T5, you have the target modules that you want to apply LoRa to, map LoRa to, is query and value tensors. Bloom, you have this, Jupyter Neo, something else. So beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And this is it, and we can define a dropout. So let's do this, and what is happening now? we create our LoRa configuration file. And then it is easy. We say here, this is a specific class, get the path model based on the classical model, the T5 model, and our path configuration file. 
and it is created our path LoRa model. Unbelievable, beautiful. And if you want to know, remember in my last video, I showed you about uh, path and LoRa, the explanation that the primary uh, parameters are frozen. So you see here, all parameters of the model we have, oh gee, we have 223.7 million parameters and our trainable parameters are just 0 0.8 million parameters. This means we only train 0.4% of all trainable parameters of the model. And this model now is configured and we can address it if it's a PEFLOR model. Beautiful. Yeah, you can have now, of course, now a look here at the modified layer structure. Let's maybe just have a look at the very first one. And you see here self attention layer, T5 attention layer. And before we start, you see here, as I told you, we focus now on the query layer and on our value layer. That here we have now in the query layer, we have now yeah, the dropout. And then we have here a linear layer from Laura and another linear layer from Laura. So beautiful. So you can have a look at the architecture of the LoRa model now in detail. You know what's going on if you have watched my latest video. Beautiful. Now, if you want to take another example, very easy. So you say again, you take now an MT5 or MT0, a large model from big science. You do exactly the same. It does not depend on a specific model. If it's in the category of T5, it runs. You have here now auto model sequence to sequence language model from pre trained. You have your LoRa configuration file. You define the model and you can say what are the trainable parameters in this case. So you download, of course, the normal big science MT0 large model that has been trained. It's based on a T5, multilingual T5. And the zero indicates it has been optimized for zero shot learning. So we download this module and then with our LoRa config file, we generate our PEFT LoRa model. And while we are waiting that it is downloading the five gigabytes, yes, beautiful. Come on, faster. Oops. Come on, come on, come on, faster. You can see now that our trainable parameters here, and here we have in total 1.2 billion parameter trainable. We have now here in total 4.7 million parameter. This means we are here trainable parameters are just 0 0.38% of all parameters. So you see, you can do this for almost any model. Now, as I showed you here, this command get path model. This is now an interesting command. So what is the source code of get path model? Now, as I showed you, you take any specific normal LLM model, you have your path configuration file. This was the reason why I explained it to you in my last video. And then it just generates the path model for you. And exactly as you define it to what target modules, to what uh, weight tensors in the layer architecture of our transformer, it should be applied, and we have now LoRa applied. This is done. Enable LoRa, beautiful. It is so simple. If you want to have a look, this is the code. But now, of course, we are here to do some real coding. So let's start. Uh, let's change to causal language model. So these are all the different models you can use with the causal path language model. And if you want to know here the specific class path model for causal LM, here you have all the information. Yes, yes, yes. Your instances, updates, yes, whatever you generate, your parameter, your mask. Beautiful. So let's go now here. I would recommend you have a look at the blog post from Hugging Face Peft. And there here, this uh, is an official Hugging Face collab research google.com. And I open this. I leave you the link, of course, in the description to this video. So let's start. We just installed all our bits and bytes, beautiful. And then we start to load our model in BNB integer eight. And here we load a model called opt by, I think it's Facebook. It's weight in half precision, 
in, in Float 16 are about 13 gigabyte on the hub. And if we load them now in 8-bit, we would require around seven gigabyte of memory instead. So let's have a look. I don't think we're gonna achieve this already here. So what we do, easy. We have here bits and bytes imported, and then we have here our auto model. Now for causal language model from pre-trained, we take here a model from Hugging Face that it's available. And now the beauty is just one line load in 8-bit is true. Device map is auto, and here we go. And now the beauty is gonna happen that we have now, yes, requirement bits and bytes, enable model loading, yes, beautiful. You have now two shards. And as you can see, we have 10 gigabytes, and I think the other one is four gigabytes. So it's about 13, 14 gigabytes that we now download from this opt model, Facebook model. And we apply now this beautiful 8-bit. And while we wait for the model here to load, I would like to uh, explain to you what does it mean really here if we talk about an 8-bit quantization. So yes, you can combine the low-rank adaptation of weight matrices with an integer 8 quantization to further optimize the memory usage and the speed inference on hardware with specialized instruction for the int8 operation on CPUs and AI accelerators like GPU and TPUs. But quantization is the process of reducing the precision of the weights and the activations of a model. So int8 quantization is a technique that reduces the precision of the weights and activations to 8 bits, coming from 32 bits. Quantization is a process that converts the floating point number to a fixed point representation with a lower bit precision, where if you have an int 8 quantization in particular, this refers to the use of an 8-bit integers representation for the weights and the activations. So, however, if we reduce now the precision of your values, of your weights in all layers, this can cause a decrease in the model's performance on a specific task. And now there's a beautiful solution to counteract this. And it is that you fine tune a quantized model. So if you have a model, you quantize the model and then you fine tune it. This involves a retraining on, of the model on the target task with the lower precision weights and activation, thereby slowly adjusting the new model parameters to a better accommodate the reduced precision. Let me give you an example. Imagine here we have a digital uh, model that we load here. We are playing a game on a computer and we load here this digital player. And you can either load it in 32-bit precision or you can load it in integer 8 precision. Now, what does this mean? This means, for example, that the thickness of the coding on the bat here is a little bit less, a little bit more. The grip strength has a variation. The elbow length, the model loaded with a little bit different value. The specific weight of the wood is different. The length of the bat is different. The optical vision of the player has a little bit modification. The muscle flexibility here, for example, in the upper torso is different. The rotational impulse is different. The elongation on the torso elongation is different. Maybe even the shoe size is different. Only tiny, tiny bits, but if you take it together in a complete system that interacts and all weights in all layers of our transformer interact, you can see this player maybe with all these little modifications needs a little bit training, five, 10 minutes of training to be optimal with his reduced parameters to play the game. And this is exactly what we're going to do here when we say the quantized model that we load, the lower precision model, fine tuning is an excellent way, not just for the fine tuning, but to optimize the model for the fine tuning. So if you keep this picture in mind, I hope you never forget to fine tune a quantized model. Now, to show you this, the, the, the magnitude what we have, Imagine we have a 1,000 times 1,000 matrix in two dimension, and we have float 32 elements. Each requires 
4 bytes, 32 bits per element. So the total memory is 1000 times 1000 times 4 bytes, 4 million bytes or 3.8 megabytes. Now, if we quantize this matrix now to integer 8, it is now requires only one byte or eight bits per element of our matrix. So the total memory usage to store this matrix goes down from 381 megabytes to 0 0.95. So we have a memory reduction of 75%. Now, there are now a lot of variations. So just to remind you, an eight bit binary number like this here is an eight bit binary number represents, for example, the decimal number 214. And you remember with 8-bit, maximum is 255. Now, 16-bit integer, uh, more powerful, it can represent values between 0 and 65,000 for unsigned integer. And then we have, of course, float 16. Now, this float 16 representation is now here the 16-bit binary format of the our number 52,736. And you remember, we have one leading bit for the plus minus. Then we have one, two, three, four, five bit for the exponent. And we have 10 bit for the significant or for the mantissa, as it's called. So this is the 16-bit binary format of this number. And now you know that with the latest development of TPUs and GPUs, based on the hardware of the chip size, we have now BFLOAT, BrainFLOAT 16. And there is a significant difference now in this kind of structure. We have also here, we exactly like FLOAT, we have one sign bit, plus minus. But instead of five exponent bits, we have now eight exponent bits, and of course, somewhere the place has to go. And instead of 10 for the mantissa, we have now only seven mantissa bits. So you say, okay, and why we changed from float 16 to this very specific brain float 16 uh, designation? Now, you have to know that on the chip, when you etch it on the chip, the hardware multiplier scales, the physical size on the chip of a hardware multiplier scales with the square of the mantissa width. So if you have your 10-bit mantissa, you scale with the square. If you only have 7-bit mantissa and you scale with the square, you see where the benefits come in. So just to be absolutely sure, so the physical size on chip of a B-float 16 multiplier is half the size in silicon of a FP16 multiplier, and a B float 16 multiplier is eight times smaller than a float 32 multiplier. And this is significant for chip development on TPU or GPU. In plus, the neural networks tend or seem to be more sensitive to the size of the exponent than to the size of the mantissa of our binary format. So but people in Google and Brain Float 16, remember this is Google Brain. So Google invented this specific format for optimal TPU chip design to ensure identical behavior of the B Float 16. It has now the same exponent size as the Float 32. Both have now an 8 bit exponent size. So Google optimized its new architecture, chip architecture, the Tensor Processing Unit, also but primarily now for BFLOAT 16. And of course, also if we use mixed precision training, our XLA compiler automatically now converts our values of our activation, of our weights in all layers of all, all tensor structures between float 32 and BFLOAT 16 automatically. And you see, this is here the improvement PyTorch 2 has now against the old PyTorch. It has now this uh, compiler functionality where you have now a real speed improvement. Of course, XLA compiler is JAX, so the purest form is in JAX. And of course, in TensorFlow 2 and TensorFlow 3, we might even expect something faster. So this is just to show you 
what we have here now in our different formats. And we go and have now I look at 8 bit, 16 bit, load 16, beef load 16, and 32 bit representation of values. And they have an extreme importance of memory, speed, and our calculation. And as you can see, we downloaded now our model in 8 bit. Now, the next three steps are interesting. We need a little bit post processing on our 8 bit model before we start here. The fine tuning, no, not the fine tuning, the adapter tuning. <clears throat> because at first, of course, we will freeze all the layers. And then we will take only the layer norm layers and cast them in a float 32 precision for the stability of the system. And we do the same with the output of the very last layer. So these three steps you see here. We freeze the model parameters. We say here that our small parameters should be casted in float 32. And the output of the very last one is also a float 32. So let's do this. And when we have this done, now our weights are ready. Now comes PEF to remember. PEF, we have our LoRa configuration file. I set the rank to 16, alpha is 32. Our target modules now change because we are working here in the EOPT model. Remember Facebook, where is Facebook? Facebook opt 6.7 billion parameter model and opt stand for open pre-trained transformer language model. It's from Meta and I've introduced in May, 2022. And it is similar, where is it? It is a decoder only model like GPT-3. So a competitor to GPT-3. So let's do this. Let's define our LoRa configuration. So let's have a look at our trainable parameter. And as you can see, we have now in total, oh Jesus. We have in total 6.6 .6 billion trainable parameters by a model of 6.7 billion free trainable parameters. So sounds about right. And trainable now, uh, that is non-frozen, about 8.3 million. And this means we only have 0.1% of all our parameters are now trainable. And now comes the, the magic that we even with this smiley fraction of trainable parameters, we will get a result. So here we are. Now comes the adapter tuning phase. So we have our 8-bit, we have our model uh, layers frozen, beautiful. We have now the, if you want, instead of model, you can think this is the PEFT LoRa model ready. And now we do exactly this. Now we have here a data set. And this data set here is uh, some English quotes. Let's have a look at this, that we absolutely know what we are talking about. Copyright English quote data sets. Here we go. So what do we have here? We have a quote, be yourself for everyone else is already taken by Otto Oscar Wilde. And it has a tag, be yourself, honesty, love. So you see, this is our data set quotes by famous people that are tagged. Beautiful English, yeah, English quotes, sorry. So this is our data set that we use. And then we go on and we define our trainer class. And this is as always, we have our trainer. In the trainer, we have defined now our model. This is now our PEFT model. Then we have to find the training data set that we just downloaded here. Then we have the trainer argument, the arguments. And we have here a batch size four, accumulation size four, warm up steps. 100 is quite a lot of. Eh? 30. Max steps 200, learning rate FP16. Remember, we are working here on a Tesla 4. So there's no brain float. There's FP16. Uh, logging steps 1. And everything should be written in our output directory that's called outputs. And our data collator is here already defined. And then we say model config use case silence for the warnings. Beautiful. So here we go. We define here our parameters for the trainer class. And then comes the moment when we start here our adapter. We do here our adapter tuning. Sorry, not fine tuning, but adapter tuning. Jesus. So 
And here we go. Yes, GPT-2 tokenizer fast. Yes, in Rust. Yes, I know. Task, okay. No problem at all for me, if you can do it. GPU RAM 8.4 of 15 gigabytes. Should be fine. We have three, epo no, we have 200 steps. Okay. Step one, training loss. Oh gee, 200. So it needs about half an hour. Should I wait half an hour? Should I show you the result? Yeah, why not? So for you, it will be a second and I will be back with you in, oops, in 40 minutes. Okay, see you in 40 minutes. So, as you can see, after 36 minutes, we are back and we finished here 200. And if you look here at the right side of GPU RAM, my goodness, we were really cr close to crash here again. So now the nice thing is we can say, hey, model, save our pre-trained. And we define here a directory. So let's do this. And if we do a refresh, we have now an output directory and there should be two files in this output directory. Exactly. There is a JSON file and the adapter file and this has only 32 megabytes. So these are here the trained adapter weights. And this is exactly what you need if we want to reload this a little bit later. But before I show you how to reload it, Let's just do some inference task. We have now this beautiful path Laura model, this evolved opt model here now adapter tuned here. And now we run inference and we say, hey, two things are infinite. I don't know what it means, but let's see what the system comes up for a particular answer. Token has a decode, output token, special token, skip is true. And two things are infinite, the universe and human stupidity. And I'm not sure about the universe. I'm not sure about the universe, but I'm not sure about the universe either. Oh, but Einstein. Okay, and if we take something from, I don't know, Hemingway, or I, I don't know who are those people, but let's see. To live is the rarest. Let's see if it comes up here. So I think it's working. You see it recognizes here our training data. It is able to reproduce here our famous quotes from famous people. We are running at 14.7 gigabyte of a 15 gigabyte uh, T4. Yeah. To live is the rarest thing in the world. Most people exist. That's all. Yep, that's it. Beautiful. So it is working and I just wanted to show you now if you want to tomorrow, for example, reload it. So at first you say thanks to Jonas Belkada for this code example, because if you want to look ha have here and hugging face this here, you can find here this model that he uploaded. We now just followed his path. So if you want to download his model, this is easy. You say import torch import path, import our transformer. Then for the model ID, you give now here exactly the hugging face name. And then exactly, you have the path configuration file. You have your classical uh, causal model from pre-trained. And then you just load the Laura model with path model from pre-trained. And here you have the classical model and here you have the path model ID. And this is it. And just to show you that it is working, Let's call this now heft model two. And here we go. Yes, I know model. Yes, 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 I know this. And here now I say, this is here my directory. So let's say that there's no problem at all. Model three, model three. Make sure you have enough. GPU RAM. I do not have enough GPU RAM. As you can see, I'm limiting. So I do not have enough memory to load it again. Okay, so this fails for this particular reason. But anyway, you see how it works, what we can achieve. We achieved some inference run. This is beautiful. And the next coding session, I think, 
we will start in a new video and then I will show you another way how to do path models. I say thank you. Yes, we just delete here this output. Yes, it was so beautiful. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned a little bit, had a little bit of fun and I'll see you in my next video.